way in your life. From this moment forward, Lord, have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in me. For you are the power and I am the clay. Come on, from this moment forward, have your way in me, Lord. Have your way in me, Lord. Have your way in me. Not my will, but thine will be done. Have your way. Come on. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm going to let the Lord have his way. Come on, tell the woman on the other side, I'm going to let the Lord have his way in me. If you say go right, I'm going right. If you say be still, I'm going to be still. If you say go forward, I'm going forward. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate God for our music ministry this morning. Amen. What an awesome job. Hallelujah. Thanking and praising God for using them in a mighty way. Amen. Again, we thank God for this opportunity. Amen. On the last Sunday. Amen. Of this year. And when I think about it, amen. God has blessed us to see 53 Sundays this year. 52 Wednesdays. 365 days. 8,760 hours. I wish y'all would help me. 525,600 minutes. 31,536,000 seconds. I say the Lord been good to us this year. Amen. And church, through it all, through it all, amen. From January to Sunday of this year, God has kept every one of us. I say God has kept every one of us. Here. Several years ago, Brother Leo Marvin Sapp had that song that's bubbling up in my spirit right now. Lord, I never would have made it without you. I wish I had some help over here today. Amen. And that, that, that song resonates with me as I stand right now to know God has been good and I never would have made it without him. And if we tell the truth this morning, amen, it ain't always been easy. It ain't always been easy. Some of us have had to shed some tears. We've received some bad news. We've had to deal with some bad reports. We've lost some loved ones. I wish I had some help up in here. Some loved ones have had to transition and leave us for a little while. But through it all, I never would have made it without the Lord. Amen? Matter of fact, I discovered something too, church. The more I think about it, if I'd have never gotten sick, I would have never learned from myself that the Lord is a healer. I wish y'all would help me on this last Sunday. And matter of fact, if I never ran into some financial problems, I never would have found out for myself that the Lord can make a way. I wish I had some help up in here. Somehow. And if I had, matter of fact, if I never had to shed a tear, I would have never found out for myself that weeping may endure for a night. But if I hold on, that joy would come in the morning. I'm just trying to set the atmosphere for the last Sunday. 53 Sundays. 52 Wednesdays. Come on, y'all. 8,760 days. I wish y'all would help me up in here. God never would have made it without him. I would have lost it all. But now I see how you were there for me. My perception, I'm stronger now. I'm wiser now, Sister Dixon. I'm better. So much better. When I look back over all that he taught me through. Come on, I wish y'all would help me today. When I look back over all that he brought me through, I can see he was the one that I had to hold on to. Anybody here ever had to hold on to him in the midnight hour? Come on, y'all, amen. Tell your name, I never would have made it without the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I made it. I made it. Even when folks said I wouldn't make it. When they lied on me. When they talked about me. When they put me down. When they wrote me off. I'm still here. Somebody ought to thank God for the fact that I made it. Now, if the Lord allows us to see midnight tonight, we will celebrate a brand new year. And it's an opportunity for us to start fresh. And I don't know about anybody else up in here, but I like that, starting fresh. And, 
and Brother Boyd, I'm glad that God allows do-overs. I wish y'all would help me. Because I don't know about nobody else up in here this morning, but there's some stuff that I didn't do last year that I was supposed to do last year. But God gives us another opportunity to do it over. Are y'all with me? Amen. Come on. There was, let, me, let me get a little deeper. There was some stuff that I thought about. Y'all ain't going to be real with me. That I shouldn't have thought about. But God gives us another opportunity to have a do-over. Come on, y'all. Amen. The, the new year, y'all, I'm trying to, it, it's a good opportunity for us to turn the page from some things we did and on to some things we need to do. Have I got a witness? Amen. Let me give y'all a little Bible. Then I'm going to read the scripture. I'm going to let the usher sit down. In the book of Philippians, somewhere around that third chapter. I heard the sister point. Amen. I ain't getting mad at you because it's son here. Amen. But, but somewhere around that third chapter, beginning of that 13th verse, Paul says, Forgetting those things that are behind me, I press forward towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Are y'all with me? And the thing I discovered is that we can learn something from Paul when he said, I forget those things that are behind me, but I press forward. Amen. He said, Look, don't necessarily be a slave to your past. Amen. He said in verse 13 and 14, Deacon Sykes, Paul said, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. And somebody here to the sound of my voice, you need to make up in your mind when you were saying, Lord, have your way. What you were really saying not only was have your way, but Lord, I'm moving on. Amen. Amen. And listen, somebody need to resolve in your heart that I'm moving on in 2018. Amen. I can't stay where I'm at. I can't keep hanging with the same people. Amen. I can't keep doing the same stuff. I got to move on. Amen. I, I, I got to tell some people I love you. No hard feelings. Amen. But 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 I can't take you with me into my future. Are y'all praying with me this morning? Thank you for all you did for me. Amen. But I got to move on because I've outgrown this place. Somebody ought to praise God with me. Amen. Paul said I'm forgetting those things that I'm behind me. Paul recognized, Brother Fred, that he had a past, but he refused to be a slave to his past. Paul suggested that we turn the page, and I'm suggesting that we do the same today. So here's what I want you to do. Now I'm going to have you turn to a scripture that may seem on the surface to be a weird text to preach from on New Year's Eve, but if you pray with me, I promise you, it's a meat on the bone. Turn with me to the book of beginnings. Genesis. We're going to end in the beginning. Genesis chapter number 19, beginning at verse 14. Amen. Now, if you, look up, you can look at the monitor and get it, or you can follow along with me in your Bible. Amen. Genesis chapter 19 and verse number 14. And I'm reading from the King James Version, and my text says this. And Lot went out. And spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord would destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, then the angels hastened, Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful unto them, and they brought him forth and sent him without the city. And it came to pass that uh, they had brought them forth out the city, that he said, me and Lot, or the angels, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, now thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life. But I can't escape to the mountains, because I'm afraid that some evil will overtake me there, and I'll die. Behold, now, this city over here is near to flee unto, and it's a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And, and my life and my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the, uh, for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee and escape thither, for I cannot do anything to thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun and was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire, from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and the inhabitants of the cities 
and that which grew upon the ground. But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Thus is the reading of God's holy word. Now, before you sit down, pray with me as I preach on this text and from this subject. Don't let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Some of y'all going to get it in a minute. Don't let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Pray with me as you have your seat in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't let your not then. God bless you, ushers. Thank God for you. Don't let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Amen. Now, let me tell you what happened over in Genesis chapter number 18 that made Lot and his daughters and their husbands to have to get up Deacon Sykes and flee out of sight. So you won't understand what happened in Genesis 19, 14 through 26 without understanding what happened in Genesis 18. Are y'all with me? Now, in Genesis chapter number 18 for you Bible readers, you will remember that the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because their wickedness has come up before me. Are y'all with me? Abraham said, Lord, I hear what you're saying, but will you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham then started pleading with the Lord and said, Lord, if there be found 50 righteous in the city, I wish I had some Bible readers up here, will you destroy the city? The Lord said, no, if I find 50 in the city, I won't destroy the city. Then Abraham started bargaining with the Lord because he couldn't find 50 righteous in the city. He went to 30 and got all the way down. Y'all come on, help me. Got all the way down to 10 and said, Lord, if you find 10 in the city, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And the Lord said, no, if I find 10 in the city, I won't even destroy the city for 10. Now you got to read, then you got to read. Because that ends chapter number 18. And then Sister Dixon, when chapter 19 starts, here comes two angels visiting Lot, saying, the Lord has sent us to destroy the sick. Now when I say you got to read, then you got to read. That must tell you that there wasn't even 10 righteous. Come on, y'all. In the city, because God said in 18, if I find 10, I won't destroy it. But when 19 starts, he sends angels saying, I'm going to destroy it. So that means it wasn't even 10 in the city that was righteous. Are y'all with me? Now, here's where the slope gets kind of slippery. But I'm not the kind of preacher that will skirt around a slippery slope. I'll slip and slide on it all day long so that God's word can go forward. Here's the slippery slope. The angels appear unto Lot who's sitting at the gate. And they tell Lot, we are here to destroy the city. Amen. And God wants to get you, your wife, your daughters, and their husbands and get out of the city. Now, remember, in biblical times, in the Old Testament, the gate of the city was the place where people congregate. It's the place where business was transacted. It was the place where people hung out and fellowship and all that. And when the two angels appear, the Bible says the lewd, L-E-W-D, the lewd men of the city looked at those two angels and their hearts start burning in passion and lust. Come on, y'all, and homosexuality. Slippery slope, but I'm going to slide on it today. Come on, y'all. These men, what are you saying, preacher? These men, Sodom was a place where men would lay with men openly. Even though God had told us that it's an abomination for a man to lay with man and for a woman to lay with woman. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the president says. I don't care what Congress says. I'm concerned with what God said. And God 
said, a man shall not lie with me. Woman shall not lie with woman. I don't care how much they do civil unions or same-sex marriage. One thing cannot happen. A man and a man can't have a baby. And a woman and a woman can't have a baby. I wish I had some help up in here. The Bible says, the Bible says, these lewd men burn so much in their heart that they said, I got to have Got to have these men. I want these men. And the Bible says that they tried to put their hands on the men. And then they was at Lot's house. And when Lot welcomed the two angels into his house, here they come. It wasn't just one or two of them. It was a whole lot of them. Here they come. Open up the door. Let us in or send these men out. We want them right now. Bible says that Lot opens the door and closes it behind. Gets out and says, wait, what y'all doing? Uh, don't do this thing. And, and, and you got to pay attention. Lot knew what they wanted to do because Lot had been accustomed to hanging out in this place called Sodom. Come on, y'all. So they said, I don't care what you say, Lot. We want them. Bring them out to us. Lot said, I tell you what. I got some daughters in here that have never known a man. Now let me pause and stick my pen there parenthetically today and say this. Somebody tell me, how can he have three daughters? Come on, y'all. That are married and have husbands in the house. But they never known a man. Something wrong with that picture. Some theologians have dared to suggest that the husband was on the down low. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me today. You gotta read, then you gotta read. Women, let me tell you something. Every man that you see that's got a six pack and, and got it going on, that's six three, dark and chocolate and cut up and chiseled. You better research that brother's past. You better do a DNA test or something, amen. You know how they have them ancestry commercials on TV? You better swab this cheek and send it off and get a DNA check and make sure that joke ain't like another man or little boy. You don't know what you get today. Amen. If you know like I know, you better stick with what you got. Stick with what you know because if you're out here creeping around, you're messing around, you don't know what you might get. You might catch something you can't get rid of. Y'all ain't playing with me today. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't let you back then. Impact you right now. And mess up your not yet. So let me go on further in the story. So the Bible says, the man said, we don't even want your virgin doors. We want the men that's behind that door. Lot, you're going to have trouble on your hands if you don't give them to us right now. The Bible says that the angels then grabbed Lot by the hand, snatched him in. And shut the door. And then the Bible says the angels struck those men that was outside with blindness. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? Now, as we get ready to go further in the text, the angels tell Lot and his wife, now look, we got to get ready to get out of here now. So I want you to get your daughters, get their sons, and the two of y'all, and let's get ready to go. But the Bible says this in Genesis chapter number 19. The Bible says that Lot and his wife lingered. Are y'all with me? Says that they lingered. Amen. Even after the angel said, look, I can't do nothing until y'all get out of here. And let me just say this real quick. It's good when you got so much favor on your life and so much mercy from God and the blessings of God upon your life that God will say, I'm going to take care of you and make sure you're protecting you and your household. Come on here, Holy Ghost. Amen. And I need to make sure you're well taken care of before I come and get through some things, amen, to address this wicked situation that's going on. Anybody here can thank God that you know you got you and your family covered in the blood of Jesus. So the Bible says they lingered. They procrastinated. Amen. And here's why. Because they really didn't want to leave. Come 
show y'all mother sykes they didn't want to leave amen they had become attached to the things of sight they had become accustomed help me lord jesus to the things that was going on in the society, in their neighborhood, down the street from them, and even next door. Their hearts had become so conditioned to the evilness and the wickedness that it didn't even bother them no more. Are y'all with me? Even though they knew of the wickedness and the perverseness, amen, and the immoral things that were going on, they had become so comfortable and so attached that they were willing to overlook y'all ain't gonna help me the things that were going on there and church let me tell you something this morning don't you ever become so attached to your past and to the things of your past and the people of your past that you have a problem letting them go I'll have some help over here I'm trying to tell you this morning on the last Sunday of this year, don't you let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Are y'all with me? Now the Bible tells us, let me give you a little New Testament, throw it in here, somewhere around Luke, come on here Holy Ghost, somewhere around Luke chapter number 12 in the 32nd verse. The shortest scripture in all of the Bible, right after Jesus wept. I memorized this now because I wanted y'all to understand this. It took me a while to get this one down. Amen. It took me a long time to memorize this one as I was preparing this week. But I finally got it because I wanted y'all to understand. Y'all know what it says? Remember Lot's wife. It took me a while to get that one down, y'all. So let's remember Lot's wife real quick. And y'all going to see why I got the topic tagged to this text like it's tagged. Lot's wife was so insignificant they didn't even give her first name. It's a reason for it. All we know her by is y'all gonna help me preach this thing. Lot's wife. Now when we remember Lot's wife we should remember her as someone who disobeyed an express command by God. And unbelief was at the very bottom of her disobedience. I know it's going to get kind of quiet now. She really questioned whether Sodom would truly be destroyed. And she even thought that she would have been safe if she stayed in. I know it's going to get kind of quiet now. She looked back on her neighbors. She looked back on her neighbors whom she had left behind. And she looked back at them and the things of her past with more concern and care than what was warranted. What are you saying, Pastor Dixon? Here's what I'm saying. She was more concerned, y'all, with her house and her goods and her friends and those relationships than with obeying God's command. And I wonder if it's some people up in here on the last Sunday of the year 2017. You might not bear witness right now because you don't want the one sitting next to you to know that you have disobeyed some of God's commands because you was more concerned with your things or with what people would say about you or with what people would say about you and to you. You can tell me later or just bat your eyes right now and say, preacher, you talking to me. Amen. Let me say it this way. Her body was in the process of leaving Sodom. But her heart was still inside. For some of y'all here in Mount Cap, <laughs> your body is here in Mount Cap, but your heart is somewhere else. I wish y'all would help me today. You know, I, I, I have to 
go back to my past because that's all I got sometimes, amen. I, I can think back in Joliet. I think it was the old James. Yeah. That was the old Jesus. They had that song out. Said your, your, your body's here with me. But your mind, y'all ain't gonna help me today. Is on the other side of town. You're messing me around. See, see, I didn't understand back then why I was exposed to all that stuff. But God will bring that up in my spirit and tie it into the text. Amen. Some of y'all just like what the old James was singing. Your body is here in Mount Calvary. But your mind and your heart is on the other. And God is saying you're fooling and messing me around. Are y'all with me? Listen to me. For some of you, your body is about to be in 2018. But your mind is still back on the things of 2017. Come on, y'all. But whatsoever can you do today, amen, don't you let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. I'm going to help me today. The Bible says she looked back behind Lot. You got to read then you got to read it. Bible doesn't just say Deacon Sykes that she looked back. She looked back behind Lot. Now, I, I, I think in my Holy Ghost imagination, she looked back behind Lot for a couple reasons. I think, number one, she looked back behind Lot to make sure Lot hadn't turned back. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all can be so deep if you want to. Don't get so deep that you're dumb. Come on. You got to read, then you got to read this right here. Amen. In the text. She looked back behind him. And I believe she looked back to number one to make sure that he didn't turn back. But number two, I think that she, the uh, Bible says she also looked back behind Lot. Because, you know, it's funny. Women. A lot of times. Y'all always want to look behind the man. And bring up his past. And the things he used to do in his past. And wondering about the things of his past. And then she looked back behind it. Boy, y'all quiet now. Boy, y'all quiet. I don't know if it's ever been that quiet up there. Maybe I done struck a nerve or something. But some of y'all, men, we do it too. Women, y'all ain't on the island by yourself. Wondering what? I wonder what they used to do. I wonder who they used to be with. Don't, let, don't you let your back then and pack your right now and mess up your not yet. Thank God that you with them. You with them now. Thank God you with them now. Amen. Let, let me rush on because y'all, I'm about to lose y'all now. So her looking back, somebody said you preached. I thank God for that. Listen. I believe her looking back was an inclination for her wanting to go back. This is symbolic of what the Bible calls apostasy, which is a falling away from God. Her looking back was an inclination for her wanting to go back. And if we, my brothers and sisters, are Christians, and if we have renounced the word and the things of the world and set our faces towards heaven and it, it can be to our detriment help me Lord Jesus to look to return back to where God has brought us out from I, I wish brother Leo I had more people that would, that that would resonate with you I wish I had more people if we are grateful for what God has done for us. If we are thankful. For where he has brought us from. And what he has delivered us out of. And who he has delivered us from. Amen. It is to our detriment. If we look back. Wanting to go back. To where and to who. God has delivered you from. Now. The punishment for Mrs. Lot's disobedience was that the Bible says she was struck dead. 
but her body did not fall down. Are y'all with me? But her body stood fixed and it stood erect like a monument or a pillar. Matter of fact, the Bible says it was a pillar of salt. Which would last forever because you do know that salt is a preservative. Don't you? Come on, y'all. It would last forever as a sort of a reminder about the punishment that comes from being this, y'all gonna help me over here. Disobedient. Now notice something. She was related to a somewhat righteous man, and God granted her more favor than that of her neighbors by allowing her to leave Sodom before he destroyed her. But he did not allow her immoral behavior to go unchecked. That's good right there. Yeah, he showed her sister Edwards more favor than her wicked neighbors. Yes, she was related to somewhat a, a godly man, but in spite of him delivering her out of Sodom, he still did not let her immoral behavior go unchecked. Are y'all with me? Okay, y'all with me? Note to self then. Yes, God loves us. Yes, God grants us favor. But he will not let your immoral behavior nor my immoral behavior go unchecked. You might get by for a little while, but you won't get away. He'll show you a little grace. He'll show you a little mercy. He'll be a little long suffering with you. But the Bible says after a while, he going to check your immoral behavior. Have I got a witness? And the pillar of salt, help me Lord Jesus, should always season us and remind us that it is such a dangerous and a detrimental thing to look back. Therefore, like Paul said in Philippians, we should never look back, but we should always press forward. Are y'all with me? Church, what, here's what I'm trying to tell you. You cannot afford to go into the new year holding on to stuff and people from 2017. I'm going to say that one again. Church, if God allows you and I to see midnight tonight, we cannot allow, amen, and go into the new year holding on to stuff and to people from 2017. What are you saying, preacher? Let me, let, me, let me say it this way. Don't you let what you did back then and what you thought back then, where you went back then, what you loved back then, and who you loved back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Don't you let what you did back then, who you did it with back then, and where you did it with back then, and what you thought back then, impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Amen. Amen. Hopefully y'all think. Let me say it this way. Don't you let what you heard from the doctors back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Don't you let what people said about you and tried to do to you back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Leave your failures, your victories, come on y'all, and all of that behind you in 2017. Leave your tears, your hurts, your gains, your losses, you're going to have to leave some people. Yes, you're going to have to leave some places. Yes, you're going to have to resolve in your heart that you're going to leave it all behind you. Because I, I declare to you this morning, you and I cannot let our back then impact our right now and mess up our not yet. Are you with me? Why, preacher? Why are you saying that, Pastor Dixon? Because you're not yet 
it's too important to you to let some stuff from back then mess it up. I wish y'all would get that. Your not yet is too important for you to let some stuff from back then mess it up. Amen. If I can hear Paul saying, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. And I wonder if there's anybody in here that love the Lord today. Amen. God is saying to you that love him today. Amen. I want to do some great things for you in your not yet. But don't handcuff me. Don't hinder me. Don't hold me back. I, I got so many blessings I want to bestow upon you. I want to perform my perfect work in your life in 2018. But it's you who's blocking your own blessings. Amen. God is saying to somebody in here this morning, I want to heal you in your not yet. I want to bring you out in your not yet. I want to make a way for you in your not yet. I want to answer your prayers in your not yet. I want to meet your needs in your not yet. I want to deliver you in your not yet. I want to open doors for you in your not yet. Come on, y'all. Amen. I want, to, I want to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing in your not yet. Come on. I, I want you to know a cattle on a thousand hills are all mine. I don't care how long your bills are. I don't care how behind they are. I don't care how low your credit score is. I am the author and the finisher of your faith. I am the one who has the last say. Amen. You're not in your not yet yet. And I want to bless you in your not yet. I want to do some great things for you in your not yet. But I can't move that you're still holding on to your back then. I'm the God of right now. Not only am I the God of right now, I'm also the God of not yet. And I wish I had some real people up in here that wanted to go forward in your not yet. Matter of fact, before I get to my not yet, God, it ain't meant not yet. It ain't midnight yet. It's about 12.45 right now. And I'm still in my right now. God, I need you to do something for me right now in my right now. My body is feeling bad. I got a bad report. My children ain't acting right. The neighbors ain't acting right. I can't go out at night sometimes because of all the crime that's going on. Somebody in me, God, to meet the needs in their life right now. God is saying if you'll stand on your feet right now, open up your mouth and give me praise right now. I'll meet the needs right now. I'll dry your tears right now. I'll step in when others have stepped out right now. I'll bless you in your right now and position you for your not yet. Is there anybody here? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you really ready? Are you ready? Then stand up right now. Open up your mouth and get ready right now for your not yet. Amen. I can't wait till I get to my not yet. As a matter of fact, I ain't got to wait till I get there. I can shout right now. I can tell God, thank you right now. Thank you for opening the door for me right now. Thank you for healing me right now. Thank you for making a way for me right now. Thank you for blessing my children right now. Thank you, Jesus, for my right now. I know I ain't got it yet, Lord, but I'm going to praise you like I already got it. Because you are the God of not yet. If there's anybody here that believes that God is able, open up your mouth and give God a praise right now. Praise Him for your not yet. Praise Him for your not yet. Praise Him for your not yet. Y'all ain't praise Him for your not yet. You may not, you must not have nothing you want God to do for you. You must have everything going well in your life right now. But I wonder if there's two or three up in here today that will praise God for your not yet. Open up your mouth and praise God for your not yet. short. 
but instead he holds me in the hollow of his hands. And he says, because you love me, I got some great things for you and you're not yet. And I don't know about nobody up in here, but I'm excited about my not yet. I can see God doing great things in my life and my not yet. It don't mean that I ain't going to have to cry sometimes. It don't mean that every day is going to be sunny. But if I just hold on, I believe that through it all, he will see me through it. Anybody here can trust in the Lord with all of your heart. short sometimes in 2017. I'm not going to try to say it was your fault or your fault. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, not my son. It's me, Lord. I messed up. I fell short. I didn't do it. It's me, Lord. But I refuse to let my back then impact my right now and mess up my not yet. The Lord had delivered Mrs. Lot from sight. But she turned and looked back. And because of her disobedience, she missed out on her right now and aborted her not yet. My brothers and sisters, this time is crucial for you. If you fail short, learn from it. Don't beat yourself up over it no more. And don't you let people beat yourself up, beat you up over it no more. Because every day God is a God of new mercies. And you ought to resolve in your heart. I ain't going to let my back then impact my right now and mess up my not yet. You got to believe that God wants to do great things for you. You got to believe that every promise in this book is for you. You got to hold on to what God has said, not what you did. Amen, somebody. God is an awesome God. And he wants to do great things for you this year. Last thing I'm going to tell you is this. You can't receive in your hands what God wants you to receive. If you got one hand holding on to what's behind you. Tell your neighbor, let it go. Tell your neighbor, let it go. Let it go. Drop it. Put your hands together and receive everything that God wants for you. And you're not yet. And if you believe that God has got a blessing with your name on it, somebody praise him one more time. Amen. Come on, doors of the church are now open. Amen. I'm done. Done. But whatever you do, don't let your back then impact your right now and mess up your not yet. Hallelujah. Come on, give God the glory. Give him praise. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.